Hello everyone, my name is Okan Seker from University of Lübeck and today I will talk about our joint work with Tim Gellersen and Thomas Eisenbart, the friendship power analysis of picnic signature skin. It's a well-known fact that embedded devices that run a cryptographic algorithm are vulnerable to physical attacks. So let's assume that we have an adversary Eve, so she will be our adversary in this presentation. Um, she can use such an information such as power, timing, or or you can she can just use an active attack and implement a fault injection. In a very basic scenario, she can just reveal the secret key using a differential power analysis. However, these results are known since the emerge of the seminal work by Kochar et al. in 1998. Um, the main reason that we would like to revisit these attacks is the ongoing NIST post-quantum project. As you know, the competition is in the third round and there is a fourth round on the horizon. So here we can see a summary of the finals and alternate candidates. Um, so this research is, is motivated by the fact that um, the such general resistance of cryptographic schemes is becoming more and more relevant as they are deployed in real, wor real world conditions. And it is one of the most important evaluation criteria of the NIST PQC standard, standard standardization process. So in this work, we focus on PICNIC, which is an alternate candidate in the NIST, uh, NIST PQC project. So let us briefly recap the current state of the art. Uh, PICNIC is a Fiat Shamir uh, type signature de derived from the MPC in the zero knowledge proof. It has a couple of nice features. For example, its security doesn't rely on any num uh, number theoretic assumptions. Essentially, the only assumption that we need are the, uh, the security of block cipher and the hash function that is modeled as a, as a random oracle. So it also supports various parameters and different signing methods. So in this work, we are not fo focusing on other variants, but there exist different picnic signatures that provide um, trade-off between size and speed. So we focus actually on the foundation of picnic in this presentation, um, the zero knowledge for boo new secrets, Zikaboo, and its optimized version Zikaboo plus plus, and more explicitly speaking, MPC net paradigm. So. So we study the application uh, applicability of side channel attacks protocols relying on the APC and end head paradigm and described these attacks in details. So we have shown two practical attacks to recover this uh, secret key and the multi-party computation of low MC algorithm. We, the first attack exploits the secret sharing process and the second attack uses the, the multi-party computation of the SVAX layer. Moreover, we give a, a, a description of the practical setup with physical embed implementation on the Freedom board uh, with Cortex M4 and implement the picnic, picnic signature scheme using the, using the official uh, repo. Um, so we choose the electromagnetic ammunition of the device as our side channel source. And finally, we give a, give a novel algebraic key recovery part to reconstruct the key. So, what we are going to show in this presentation is first first of all we take a look to the look at our motivation and give the basis of low MC, which is the key component of picnic, and Zikabu, which again provides the zero knowledge proof of, of picnic signatures, and we take a look how to how, how these attacks how the attacks actually working against uh, against Zikabu. So then we continue with the attack descriptions and this is followed by the by the description of uh, practical setup and experimental results. And finally, we give the algebra key recovery and then we conclude our presentation. So let's start with the symmetric key primitive of picnic signature, uh, which is low MC block cipher. So when we go into the details of, 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 the, of the block cipher, we see a very simple structure. Here we can see the picture taken from the low MC documentation. Um, it has four main layers, basically. Uh, which is the key addition, constant addition, linear, and S-box layer. It is a very low end depth, so uh, the S-box is only, only 3 by 3 and, and, and it's, it's, it's a very low, low end depth, and which makes it suitable for the multi-party computation. Um, S-box layer is only the nonlinear layer, therefore, during MPC uh, MPC computations, uh, only the in this area where we need the communication between the players. So, the values corresponding to this layer are open during the verification phase, we, which we will actually uh, describe more detail in the, in the following slides. And we will use this fact in our attacks. So, but there is one caveat here. As you can see, there is only 30 bit goes into the SBOX layer, which causes us some problems. However, at the end of the presentation, we will describe how to overcome this issue uh, with the attack, attacks on the deeper rounds. So, uh, let's see how the MPC in the head actually working. Um, 
So as we said, this is the, 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 the zero knowledge proof part of, of the picking signature scheme. So the idea is simple. Um, uh, we have we have a public function phi and a secret value x, and which produce again a public value y. And the idea is to split this co computation into three branches. As you can see, uh, we have uh, two main functions here. We have the share and reconstruct, reconstruct. And the third component is the circuit comp computations, which uh, which are XOR or AND operations. Um, the share functions, as the name suggests, uh, gets get a secret value and uh, produce a, a produce a sharing of, of, of X. And the reconstruction is just uh, to to um, to um, to sum the output values and to produce output y. Um, the first thing, of course, is the is the multi-party uh, computation should be correct. Uh, and the main idea of the MPC in the head is revealing two branches. Uh, two branches will not reveal any information about the x, um, and therefore this can be used as a zero knowledge, zero -knowledge proof. And so I just grab, um, we can just reveal the computations, um, reveal just two branches of, 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 of our circuit decomposition and prove the, the, the knowledge of the x value. So, um, and, the, and the values uh, derived while generating the signature, as, 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 uh, as we are going to describe in the next slide. So, in, in, in picnic case, uh, this phi function is, is selected as low MC, which inputs the same plain text um, and the same secret key for each repetition. So, and now let us combine what we what we have seen and describe the basis of picnic. So in this figure, we can see uh, an overview of the signature scheme. So the highlights area with the green area uh, shows us our target, the mul uh, multi-party MP MPC, uh, multi-party low MPC calculations. So in this area, uh, as you can see, the the multiple repetitions of MPC low MC is implemented. So explicitly speaking, there exists uh, 219 repetitions, and for each repetition. Uh, a challenge is derived. Here you can see the values from E1 to E1. So that means for each iteration we are opening a subset of the branches as we just described in the previous slides. So the challenge points us which values are going to open. However, each repetition uses the same plain text and, and the same secret key. So the rest of the scheme corresponds to the commitments, hashing, etc. Um, and since we would like to focus on MPC low MC and the challenges, um, we would like to we, we just choose to um, choose to focus on this area as the secret key of the signature scheme is actually used in this area. So now let us go back to Zikabu again. Um, uh, as, as we left uh, 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 the, the, the last time we left, we opened two branches, right? So as as as, as the protocol itself. Um, so you see how can uh, Eve can actually see the open values as free props. Um, clearly, she can read the revealed values due to the protocol itself. And using this information, she can just prop a variable in the unopened branch, and this will leak information. So, and using this idea, we will describe our attacks. So let us focus on the first attack. So this attack uses the calculations of the secret sharing process, or the share function, as we just see. So the implementation of this operation is done randomly sampling the key shares of first two players. Using these values, the key share of the third play is calculated as in, the as in this equation. So, critical thing is, during the challenge and opening phase of the picnic scheme, the key shares of these two players, two of the three players, are revealed and become the part of the signature, which we describe as free props in the previous slides. So, in the following example, let's focus on a single challenge, let's say C0, which reveals the key shares of the first and second player. In this case, um, the key shares of unopened player key 2 is, is a product of two chained XOR. The first XOR is with the secret key, key S, and the first key share, key 0, which is then stored in register R. So the second XOR is the value in the, in the register with the second key share, key 1. So the, result, the resulting value corresponds to the final key share, key 2. So therefore, we can transfer a key guess on, a, on, on, on secret key, key S, on a key guess on uh, key 2, which is supposed to be secret. Um, the second attack is on the SVAX layer, uh, on the SVAX calculation. Uh, so why we choose this layer? Because, as we talked before, the only nonlinear layer of low MC is the, um, is the, um, of low MC. So the, this layer is, is only the nonlinear, uh, on, 
on the London layer of low MC, and therefore there should be a communication between players. We do not MPC low. Uh, we do not the MPC low MC with uh, the players of of, of, of of this operation by capital P0, P1, and P2, and their states as uh, small P0, P1, and P2. You can see that we further denote the theoretical unshared unshared player as capital P and its state as small p. Uh, moreover, the dashed values are, are not revealed. So therefore, what we need is to just uh, formalize these unopened uh, variables using the open ones. So again, we focus on a single challenge uh, where, where the state p0 and p1 are opened. Uh, using this correctness of these equations, uh, we can successfully implement the key guess. So, uh, in summary, what we have shown that we can exploit the MPC net structure of picnic signature scheme by focusing on two different parts of the algorithm. So clearly these explanations are theoretical and sometimes it's hard to digest in 10 minutes. So we need a saver, which is the practical setup. So in this, uh, in this, in the next, we focus on uh, not only our theoretical setup, but uh, with a, a, a practical setup and give the experimental results. So first uh, we, we would like to introduce our practical setup. So in this picture, you can see an overview of our setup. Our capturing device, we have used a Tektronix MSO6 with 320.5 uh, 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 sampling rates. As our target device, we have used the Freedom board with Cortex-M4 clocked at 120 uh, megahertz. So, um, as our search channel source, we have chosen a blocking capacitor as seen in the picture and placed the, 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 the electromagnetic probe close to this point. So, why we have chosen this? Because um, this capacitor uh, represents the, the power consumption best. Uh, let's first take a quick look at, this, uh, a look at the sample trace. Here you can see a single round of MPC low MC structure. It starts with the circuit sharing, which will be our first target um, in, the, in, the, in the following slides. And this, the, the, the algorithm continues with the key whitening and other linear layers of low MC, as we described in, in, the, in the previous slides. So the, secret, the second interesting area is actually the, at the end of the at the end of the trace where we, where we can see ten S box calculation individually. So you can see the labels, um, and this area where we will focus for our second attack. Okay, um, as our first step, we would like to verify the leakage first of all, um, and this can be done by 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 a, by a simple leakage analysis test. So as our uh, test tool, we have used TVLA, which is Test Vector Leakage Assessment. So this is a, uh, a simple statistical tool that is used in the literature uh, for a leakage uh, uh, the literature for leakage analysis. It's a pass-fail test to determine if an implementation has a leakage or not. So what we call in this case is a, a leakage is the data-dependent behavior of, of the device. So there are two different versions of text test. Although we are not using the first one, uh, in our analysis, I would like to describe it in order to capture the essence of leakage analysis. The first one is fixed versus random. Uh, this one is to detect all first order leakages of a device. So the idea is, is to process either fixed or random data. So as you can see in this example, we can, we can just select a fixed plain text, and in this case it's, it's all zeros, or choose a random plain text and compare the side channel information. Um, uh, therefore, this gives you this give you a data dependency through the implementation by comparing the traces belonging to a fixed data with the traces belonging to a random data. And the second one is random versus random. In this case, we always process the random data. However, the classification depends on a single bit inside the implementation. Therefore, the second method is used to observe specific target in an implementation. And as our uh, leakage verification, uh, we use random versus random test. Um, in this analysis, we open the values. We use the open values from the tenth S box, and 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 to the classification using the open values as highlighted in this slide. Um, that is, we compare the traces classified the by, by the value of a, a, a zero uh, XOR A one. So remark that this analysis can be done with any or any of the open values for the same calculation. So the leakage is clear and can be seen in this case. Um, and as the maximum absolute T value exceeds 4.5, even with uh, 6,000 traces. And if we choose a different uh, open values, this peak will just be, will be shifted. So that, that will be only difference. Um, since, uh, now since we verify 
that picnic is indeed variable, let's take a look to the key recovery attacks. So here um, you can see the pair results with uh, 20,000 traces. Although this graph we cannot see any difference uh, on a single single pick. And also you can see our power model here. And for each candidate we use this formula to calculate the Hamming rate and which, uh, which, which gives us a model for our, our, our power consumption of the device. Um, but when we take a look at the, uh, the maximum correlation with respect to the number of traces, the correct key indeed gives us the highest results. And moreover, the, the correct key is actually distinguishable with less than 2,000 traces. Remark that uh, every signature we have some repetitions, right? So we have uh, 219 repetitions. And then we select the, the repetitions that gives us the same challenge. For example, let, let's choose the same, uh, same MPC, low MC repetitions for the for the for for challenge C0 and this will give us roughly 30 signatures so when we have when we collect the 30 signatures we will have tw uh, 2000 traces uh, roughly 2000 traces that belongs to the same challenge and therefore we can use the open values for those traces um, when we look at the second attack we see a similar similar pattern here here uh, we can see the three bits of the same uh, S box Although we can see two symmetrical lines here, the highest negative value gives us the correct bit, and this is just because of the, the because of the, the position of our uh, electromagnetic probe. Um, so when we take a look to the, the change um, of the values with respect to the number of traces, uh, the success of the attack is, is much clearer. The highest negative values are clearly distinguishable with 2,000 traces, and similarly, as in the previous attack we can get the correct key, that means using uh, 30, 30 individual signatures. Okay, now until what we discuss until here is how to reveal the, reveal the key related informations. Um, but as, as I described before, now there is there's a caveat, right? So we, we know that uh, due to the low MC structure, there is only 30 bits goes into the SPOX layer, and that leaves us 30 bits of, of, of the round key. Uh, but this is actually not enough to get the 128 bit key recovery for the secret key. But the good news is we can repeat the attack on the deeper rounds of low MC. So due to the MPC in that structure, the values are open for each round and the key related values for each round are actually revealed. Um, here you can see the DPA attack on the second round s box layer. And clearly the images are similar and wha what we have shown. Um, so what does this mean? Uh, we are actually getting uh, getting from the attacks on the deeper runs is actually a system of linear equations as given in the slide. So this is just u times uh, secret key equal to v. So secret key is key s um, and it's 128 bit and u is derived from the low MC structure and v is derived from the attacks and r you can think about as the, the number of runs that the adversary is attacking. So every round we are getting 30 bit information. Therefore, for every round, what we are getting is actually 30 rows of, of U. And 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 that's that's all that's all we need basically. We need to just fill this fill this U, U uh, fill this uh, system of linear equations and solve it. Uh, of course, we can just solve the equation uniquely. Uh, to, to solve this equation, what we need is 1 to 8 independent equations, right? Um, of course, we can go like five rounds and have uh, 150 equations um, that satisfies this equation, or just attack on the four rounds and brute force the last eight bits, and the solution just can be done by a, by a simple Gaussian elimination. So, in conclusion, what we have shown is the side channel analysis on protocol level is a real threat, and MPC in the head does not provide necessary does not necessarily provide uh, security since the open values give the adversary additional information. Um, what we have shown with these two attacks on, uh, on, on two different stages of picnic sig sig signature scheme that leads us to full key recovery. And additionally, uh, what we have shown is, uh, is, is, a, is a novel uh, key, novel algebraic key recovery to combine these attacks. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us or if you, will, if you, have, uh, if you are more interested can just uh, you can get more details in our ePrint. Thank you.